hold fast your confession. Hold fast your confession because the one who promised you is faithful. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise be to Jesus. Wow. Another beautiful opportunity we have to gather, to fellowship, and even to share the word of God. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you for tuning in and for joining us. And uh, kindly remember to share this link with someone so that we become a blessing to as many as possible. This is the Marvelous Believer Show. I am Lucy the Porre, and I am so honored that uh, I am able to share the word of God with you today. And I know God wants to encourage you. God wants to speak to you. God wants to help you in one way or another. So just stay tuned and let us fellowship together, share with someone, and uh, let's be interactive. Let's be a blessing to each other even as we share the word of God. So let us just make a short prayer and then we will share the word together. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you have given us a new opportunity, a new platform to share your word. And we know that your word is life, it's spirit and it's life. And so we know that even as we fellowship in this short word that I'm about to share, it will speak life, encouragement, uh, it will give someone a new understanding of your love and your ways in the name of Jesus. I thank you for everyone that has tuned in now and those that will watch much later because your word, your word is life and it can never lose its power. It has the power to transform and the power to perform that which it speaks. So even as I speak tonight, that which I'm going to speak will transform and perfect our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. I'm excited about something uh, that I want to speak to us. Just a thought that the Holy Spirit was putting in my spirit and I thought we can share in this platform now that we have the platform. Thank you so much, uh, Wema TV, for always giving us this platform that we are able to share the word of God and to fellowship with each other. So I, I was just thinking about the word in the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23 that says, Hold fast on your confession. Uh, let me just read it for us. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. The Bible says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. The, um, let us hold fast the confession of our hope, for he who promised is faithful. The writer of Hebrews uh, tells us why we can hold fast on what we believe. Hold fast. The reason why we can hold fast on what we confess is because the one who promised is faithful. Praise be to Jesus. And so when I, I was just meditating on these words, I could imagine uh, the writer of Hebrews had something in mind. It is not difficult to hold fast on something that you have believed when everything is very okay. It is not difficult to hold fast when everything is moving as expected at the pace you expect and the direction you expect. But there are times in life when life wants to slow down. There are times when things actually slow down. There are times when things take a different direction. There are times when things actually stop, stand still. And those are the times when the writer of Hebrews is telling us, hold fast on your confession. You have confessed and the one who promised you is faithful. It doesn't matter how things have appeared now. It doesn't matter which direction it looks like it's taking. He is encouraging us, hold fast on that which you confess, on your confession. Why? Because the one who promised is faithful. The one who brought you this far is faithful. The one who has brought you, the one you have called Ebenezer up to now, is faithful. The one who opened doors in the past is faithful. The one who got you out of the Mary clay and there you are very established is faithful. It does not matter wh what is happening, how slow things look like. He tells us the reason we can hold fast on our confession is that the one who promised us is faithful. And that is God. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. That is our creator, our daddy, our father. He is faithful. And so we can hold on. Now, the thing that was, <coughs> that was, has actually been in my mind as I'm thinking about uh, this uh, discussion is how, how, 
this common language that I think we developed or it was developed in the world and the church looks like adopted it. Unfortunately, even as the marvelous believers, we sort of adopted. I think it's just a jargon that we picked and we adopted so that when things don't look very right, when things are going slow or they look like they've stopped altogether, we have decided to call it wilderness. We have decided to say that we are in our wilderness. We have decided actually to accept and to say you have to be in the wilderness so that you can reach the promised land. We have, we have sort of accepted it, adopted it, and that has become our language. And I was just thinking about it and I thought I am not completely very comfortable with that. Let me talk about it. Because I, I, I think it disturbs our unconscious, it, it sort of conforms our unconscious mind. It makes us to conform to a pattern that is not the pattern of our kingdom. It makes our unconscious mind to accept or to adopt that. And when I think about the wilderness, it, it was, um, the wilderness experience actually was for the children of Israel. And it was a punishment because they were in, because of their unbelief and disobedience. It was not a good thing. Actually, they went around for 40 years and died in the The generation, the Bible says, died in the wilderness. So when I think about it, I feel it disturbs our our conf I mean our confession. It doesn't really tally with our confession. Hold on that which you confess. We, the Bible tells us, let me read this, uh, what Jesus was saying in John chapter 5. Glory be to Jesus. I, I know this doesn't sound very okay, but it's, it's exciting me even as I speak about it. John chapter 5 verse 24, Jesus says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears the word, my word, and believes in him who sent me, has everlasting life, and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Jesus was saying, as we believe, the New Testament believers, the marvelous believers, we have passed from judgment. We have passed from death to life. We are born again. We've been accepted in the family of God. We are no longer judged. We are no longer in judgment. We are no longer being punished for unbelief. We have already believed. The children of Israel were being punished for unbelief. God was teaching them. I don't know who taught us that God teach, can only teach us a lesson in the will, through wilderness. When we understand the love of the Father, when we understand that he made us his righteousness, when we understand you are the jewel of the Lord, you are the, you are the, the darling, the last edition of the uh, marvelous believer. You are the best thing that God ever made. I don't think that same love can 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 find a way of teaching you through wilderness. We have the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He can teach us in love. He can direct us. He can teach us in a different way. So I know times come when we they are really quiet and dry and and wrong, but it doesn't have we don't have to make our conscious our mind, our unconscious mind adopt to I am just in the wilderness. This is how God deals with me. God is our father. He can deal with us differently. The Bible says we have already passed from judgment into life. We have passed from death. We don't have to be judged. We don't have to live in condemnation because what that happens, when that happens, what it does to us is it develops in us a consciousness of condemnation because as long as things are not okay, your mind is now has been conformed to believe this is your wilderness. This is God help making you to go through this so that you learn a lesson. And so you are condemned. And so you believe you are wrong and God is correcting you through the wilderness. But the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation for us who are in Christ Jesus. It doesn't have to be that way. The book of First or Colossians, the book of Colossians chapter 1, the Bible tells us, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, that we have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his marvelous son, into the kingdom of God. So we don't have to do things the way the kingdom of darkness used to do it. We don't have to do things the old covenant way. God does not have to deal with us the way he dealt with the, with the children of Israel. 
Actually, God is not dealing with us at all. As far as God is concerned, you were translated, you were removed from the kingdom of condemnation into the kingdom of light. As far as God is concerned, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. As far as God is concerned, you have been, <coughs> sorry, you've been justified. And so there is no condemnation. God does not punish us. What usually happens, let me just say this as a by the way, what usually happens is sometimes when uh, someone has walked out of the ways of God or done something that is wrong, sin, sin is a result of the sinful nature. Sin is a result of the fall of man. Sin came after the fall of man. And so sin, sin, the sins that happen in this world, the bad things, the wrong things, are seeds of the sinful nature. And the sinful nature we have said here several times is the death, spiritual death, because it's separation from God. So sins are seeds of death. Sin is a seed of death. So normally what happens is there are things we do that come and produce the seeds of death. And sometimes those seeds come and germinate and they have consequences. It is not God punishing you. It is the nature of sin germinating or the nature of sin producing things that are wrong. David said, I love Psalms 23. David was, David says, the Lord is my shepherd. He leads me through green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me for his name's sake. Uh, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. When the Holy Spirit is leading you, he leads you beside still waters. He leads you to lie in green pastures. But David says, though I walk, there he puts a disclaimer that when, it, when I'm in the valley of the shadow of death, it's me who has walked there. And so there are times that we actually walk into issues. We actually walk into some messes. We, we walk, we take ourselves. It's not the Holy Spirit that leads us. It is us who go there. But David discovered the faithfulness of God in that he even says, though I walk in the through the valley of the shadow of death, he delivers me. He is careful to pick me from there. He is still careful to find me there. So God does not lead you to the wilderness. Actually, when you walk into those things, he finds you, he picks you, he brings you back into his love, into his abundance. Glory be to Jesus. The Bible says we have been reconciled back to God. God reconciled us back to himself through the son, Jesus Christ. While we were lost in our sin, while we were separated from God, he reconciled us back to himself. And I was just thinking about, um, about um, Adam, the, the, the one man that God lived with before the fall of man. Because the Bible says he reconciled us back to himself. So I always like to conform or transform my mind to understand that now is as if man never fell when you you become a new creation or when you become a believer when you allow jesus in your life you are reconciled back to god it's as if man never fell it's as if there was no separation he has reconciled us back to to what i call the default settings what he started with the fellowship between daddy and sons that is where we have come. And when and I was just thinking about, because I was actually just meditating on this issue of why do we, what happens when things are so quiet and what happened so that we adopted the language of I'm um, in the wilderness so that uh, God can fine tune me so that I can emerge and you know, things like that. And I thought about the, our, our father Adam. When he, was, when he was in the Garden of Eden, when he was always walking and God would come in the cool of the day and they would fellowship and he was, he was, he was the, the first created man in the image of God. And there he was with all the wisdom, he could name all the animals, he was managing the Garden of Eden. He was, he was the only one doing everything. He was super, the wisdom was on point, it was the wisdom of Christ in him. But one time God put him to rest. And, uh, and I, I chose to think about this man because I know that there are times when we have just been slow, things have gone slow. It does not mean you're in the wilderness. Adam himself, it got to a point where he was put to rest. And God, the Bible has never told us how long he slept because um, one, day to, I, one, day to, 
one day to God can be a thousand years. So I don't know for how long he slept, but what I know is when Adam woke up from that sleep, he was no longer alone. He was no longer just himself. He had a helper. He could do more than he could have done before. Actually, he got even the power to reproduce. He became now productive. And I want to submit to you that there are times when things go a bit slow. It is, it is good to, trans, to be positive. It is good to know that things can be working out and you emerge stronger. You emerge better. You emerge more productive. Glory be to Jesus. Because you are in the hands of God. You are not in the wilderness. You are in the hands. The Bible says, hold on fast your confession. Because he who promised is faithful. Paul was writing to Timothy in uh, the book of First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. And he tells him, lay hold of eternal life that you confessed when you believed. Lay hold of eternal life that you confessed when you believed. Believe in it, lay hold of it. And what is eternal life? It is a life that we have received, the new creation life, the life that Christ has given us. We have life and life in abundance. Let us hold on it. Let us lay hold of it. Let us refuse to have unbelief. Let us refuse to transform our mind into the patterns of this world. The patterns of this world tell us you are condemned. The patterns of this world tell us um, God is punishing you. The patterns of this world tell us uh, you are in the wilderness, but our new covenant, the one who promised is faithful, tells us that I will never leave you, I will never forsake you, tells us you have been justified, tells us that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What would you be doing in the wilderness? <coughs> that was for the children of Israel because of their unbelief and disobedience. We have passed from judgment into life. We have passed from death into life. God is no longer punishing you. My marvelous believer, as you are listening to me, I want you to know that it doesn't matter how things are looking right now. It is just a slow time. It is just uh, uh, maybe a time that uh, things are not working as you expected. Things have not taken the pace you expected. But it's not a punishment from God. If you understand the love of the Father, if you understand the new covenant, if you understand that you have actually been removed from this kingdom. The, last week we were discussing that we have been made ambassadors. Who is an ambassador? An ambassador is someone who is in a different nation but representing his nation in that, uh, maybe in a different country. And that is who we are. We are in this world and we are not of this world. We are in this world, but we represent our kingdom. So we are not judged according to the rules of this world. We are not judged according to the ways of this world. We are not judged according to the way this world would be judged. We represent another kingdom. And so we live by the standards and the systems of our kingdom. And our kingdom says you are justified. Our kingdom says you are blessed. Our kingdom says he who called you is faithful. He who brought you this far is faithful. He who opened that business for you is faithful. He who opened that ministry for you is faithful. He who gave you that family is faithful. He who gave you an opportunity to study is faithful. It doesn't matter where in life you are and things look like they have gone slow. He who called you, hold on fast your profession or your confession. Hold fast on your confession. He who promised is faithful. And I want us to declare these things. There is a word that blessed me so much uh, this morning. I want to read it as we finish. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. I want to read it as I conclude. <coughs> Revelation chapter 5 verse 10, the Bible says, He has made us kings and priests to our God. He has made us kings and priests to our God. Now the word that, that um, caught me, we've been priests for too long. We've been intercessors, we've been uh, people that are praying for our families, for our business, for our nation, for our friends, for everyone for too long. But we have neglected being kings. And the kings decree things kings decree things and they become kings declare things and they become and so i want as we de uh, we lay hold of our confession i want us to declare i was just thinking about the time we when when um when we were in the when covid was so bad in this nation and in many other countries like our president would think of what to do next and he would maybe call 
for a meeting and you would announce that there is now going to be curfew or the whole country is on lockdown when the king declares thing it becomes the law if you were caught not obeying that that was not in our constitution that did not have to be what is in the constitution of kenya but he would declare it and it would become a law and if you disobeyed it you would be breaking the law so when kings declare things i want to encourage you as you as we we declare things uh, together it doesn't have to be what is or what has always been. It doesn't have to be what you know. It doesn't have to be what has always been the pattern in your family. It doesn't have to be how people have done it in the past. What you feel in your spirit, declare it, decree it. You are a king. He has made us kings and priests unto God. Kings are put there to declare things and they become. And so we can declare and it becomes. We can decree. We can decree things that have not been the pattern in our families, in your own life. Maybe you had never thought it this way, but it comes in your mind. Just decree it. Just take authority. You've been made a king. You can decree a thing and it becomes. It doesn't have to be the usual. It can be. It can begin with you. Praise be to Jesus. And so I want us just to... To, to, to end this session, but what I want to say is hold fast your confession. Hold fast your confession because the one who promised you is faithful. And we can declare things. We can never end the list of things. But even as we end, I want us to just declare together that I am the righteousness of God so that there is no time I am condemned. There is no time I have been punished. I am not put in the wilderness so that I can be taught a lesson. My Father in heaven loves me. He has given me the Holy Spirit who is my teacher and my guide. I am the righteous of God, I am justified. Glory be to Jesus. I have been accepted in the family of God. I am no longer rejected. I am not an orphan. I am accepted in the family of God. I am the light of the world. I am not condemned. Glory be to Jesus. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am not cursed. I am blessed. I have eternal life. Glory be to Jesus. The Bible says I have come that they may have life and have life in abundance. I have life in abundance. Hallelujah. That is who we are. Lay hold of your confession, marvelous believer. Let us not waver because the one who promised us is faithful. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. I would wish to end there. I believe God has encouraged you. God has spoken to you. Let us lay hold our confession. The one who promised, the one who brought you this far is faithful in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And thank you for listening to us. Uh, keep watching the Marvelous Believers show. This is Wema TV and we are so blessed by your support. Keep supporting us and keep praying for us. Amen. <music>